Why do you never try to stop her? Fight back! Do something! So, how many times have you been at this? What did you do? Oh, come on, you're not telling me you haven't learned how to pause time yet. <laughs> I figured you'd be way past that. Don't worry, lover boy, she's okay. But she is nylon a little bit, so why don't we just... Uh... So, this, this isn't the first time we've had this conversation, is it? How did you know? I know about the slipping. And who do you think paved that road? <laughs> Any guesses? Survey says? He who remains. Big. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And welcome to Panels to Pixels podcast. We're basically covering uh, Loki season two. We're doing the remaining episodes. Uh, for those panelers that have been listening, sorry, I did not get episodes three and four, which we did actually record. I lost the, the actual uh, audio completely at, on my computer when I was doing massive amounts of... Uh, podcast editing not just for you know panels and pixels but also for adrenaline so i'm sorry for that and i'm sorry to steve too because we spent like what a good half hour 45 minutes it was a good, it was a good little story. episode but it's okay it, those things <laughs> happen things happen but uh we decided all right well you know we're gonna cover three four five and the finale which is episode six so uh this is gonna be an interesting one so we actually already did episodes one and two which you could go back to if you haven't listened to this podcast before, but we'll be covering episodes three, four, five, and six of Loki season two. That's on Disney plus. So uh, we'll move on. And obviously this is a spoiler full podcast. So just keep in mind, those of you who have never listened before, this is spoiler full. And we will be talking about at the end, how the season ending might possibly and how it possibly would affect the MCU and the movies coming up, even though the Marvels has just released too at the same night that uh, Loki season two, episode six, the finale, you know, showed up. There's a lot going on. And uh, with that, we're going to move right in and we're going to give you the episode titles and the synopsis. So, Steve, start us off with the first one. Sure. Uh, Loki season two, episode three, 1893 is Loki and Mobius go on the hunt to find everyone's favorite cartoon clock as they try to save the TVA. And season two, episode four, heart of the TVA. The synopsis there is the TVA looms near catastrophic failure, but Loki, Mobius and Sylvie have a he who remains variant. And season two, episode five, science slash fiction, Loki traverses uh, dying timelines in an attempt to find his friends, but reality is not what it seems. And season two, episode six, glorious purpose, but I did not have the synopsis, but it is the season finale. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I didn't get the uh, synopsis put in, but the fact is the season finale leads into a lot of stuff that we'll talk about. Like I stated, anything that's going on with the MCU. So with that, we'll move right into episode three. Shortly, we're only going to do this for a certain amount of minutes before we get to the, uh, the season finale. But uh, what did you think of episode three as a whole, Steve? As a whole, I think we, I really liked it. It was, uh, you know, I like seeing the old timey old West kind of, area it's it was a change from what we've seen before we you know we had some ancient greece we had some other other things some other we had some even some other planets in the first season but actually getting to see the past earth was pretty cool yeah i agree uh i liked it for the fact that you know we had a world's fair and mm -hmm. we got a lot of uh exposition in it as far as 
what was happening within that time. And I'm a huge World's Fair uh, enthusiast of like there, certain areas. This one, I believe, was where in Chicago. Chicago, yep. And uh, it it was done in the late, I think, 1800s. 1885. So 18, 18 yeah, 1885, because 1868 to 1885 is where yeah. They were. And we get to see a lot of cool references as far as like uh, Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla. 1893, 1893, not 1885. I've got it wrong. Yeah, because it's 1893 is the episode. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. I didn't okay. even think of it. I said yeah, late yeah. 1800s. I'm, I'm, cert- I'm certainly listening to it going, wait a minute. No, I messed up something there. So, yeah. Okay. I'm not even reading anything that's there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it, it's pretty cool. It's, it, it's a time there that I, I just like. So uh, we got a lot of cool references. We got a lot of good visuals based upon with that time. And I think it's a little bit more realistic, too. So I just like the ambiance. I love the intro to the uh, show where they have the MCU theme, but it's done in ragtime for its time Mm -hmm. that they did. So and then we do get a little snippet of Miss Minutes under the uh, the Marvel banner that always gets all the uh, MCU stuff. Mm -hmm in it yeah, from you said, certain movies. I, I still haven't been able to catch it. It's too quick for me to catch it, but uh, uh, I'll take your word for it. It's there. <laughs> it's there. And it's pretty cool. So uh, with that, we'll go into our favorite moments within it and what what we liked about the episode. So Steve, you want to start us off? This is going to be casual conversation, everybody. So keep that in mind. The first thing I've got is just real, real quick. It was a line that I didn't catch in the first time or the first couple times viewing, but I caught it in this most recent one is that OB says that timelines that were pruned by docs are growing back. Yes. It's a really quick line from Obi, but suddenly we realize that all those ones that she pruned are growing back. So that means those people are coming back, but it also means more timelines are out there. And this ties in towards the end when we get to, You know, when we get to episode six and we start hearing about duplicate timelines being made and infinite number of timelines and all that. So it was interesting to have that little callback there. And when I caught that from OB, that those ones that she pruned, because, you know, they made a big deal. Sylvie and everybody made a big deal out of them killing all those people, all those timelines. Well, now they're coming back. So I don't know how that plays into their theories about the DBA and stuff. Yeah. One of my moments was more of uh, Victor Timely getting that uh, sight of him. We take off literally where we saw him at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. So we see that scene where Mobius and Loki show up, but we do get that whole introduction of how he's able to get it. So we see him at one point as a kid and he gets the TVA handbook from Renslayer through Miss Minutes. And apparently this was according to the plan and Mm -hmm. the plan was originally spoilers from he who remains. Well, she says that in this episode, so it's not really a spoiler. It's a, but yeah, that's, that's in this episode, Miss, because I had that in my notes also here, Miss Minutes that she keeps saying she's running the plan that he created, even though he's dead, she's still going to keep running his plan. Yeah. And I, I just like how they had to skip ahead and then they get there. You see the camaraderie between Mobius. We mentioned this before when we previously recorded this, uh, I, like the buddy cop thing mm-hmm. and ha- how they get along, like the Merton rigs, like we've spoken before about their their relationship and how when, you know, Loki sees it was Thor, Baldor and uh, the uh, Odin. Mm-hmm. Is it Odin? Yeah. Odin, yeah. yeah. They're... they're uh, visage on like uh like it looks like cut tree posts or whatever it mm-hmm. was to to look like them and and how uh mobius is like a cool friend saying yeah you are god i forget <laughs> that you're a god you are an amazing person yeah and, and it's so cool and the fact that we do get to see loki and he does use his uh magic uh, yeah, we get a time. lot of we got a lot of magic in this season uh, alone out all throughout. We got a lot more magic, I think, than even in the first one, really. Um, and we had snippets of it in the first one. But this this one particularly, this is one of my notes is that fight between Loki and Sylvie where they're where they're throwing their magics around and yep. throwing Victor around and stuff. is just really, really great. I thought it was just it was just amazing to me. Um you know, it, uh, with the whole thing about when when the, he flashes his magic and those thugs run away, they're like, you can have him, you know, you're okay, we're gone. And they leave. It was really, I thought that was great. Again, just the, the use of magic this season has been great, I think. 
Yeah, and it, to add to that fight scene too, it was done on an older version of what was would be like a Ferris wheel. But mm-hmm. instead of that, it looks like train cars going around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost like the the London the the eye in London. You know, those big has those big cars that I've yeah. never been in because the line was always too long. But they're like really big cars that you have that to set in. So that was pretty cool to yeah. see. Yeah, and they they had and the, each fight though was from car to car because each person was in a car. So yeah. it's, it's as if they were in their own little little universe at one point. Mm-hmm. And they finally get off it, obviously, and the they wind up, uh, I, I guess, Renslayer and Victor Timely, as well as Miss Minutes, get away, and they're traveling away uh, to wherever his other place of uh, work is, which is yeah, in the Wisconsin. River. In Wisconsin, because the, the taxes are lower. It's lower taxes in Wisconsin. <laughs> So and then on top of that, we we get to see how Renslayer is dispatched by Miss Minutes through Victor Timely, just casts him aside. And the one, even though it's kind of wacky, kooky, and crazy, how Miss Minutes has like more of an affection for Mister mm-hmm. uh, Timely or He Who Remains, and how her obsession is. And then we realize her her background. Basically, she was an AI, but was allowed to advance on her own. And mm-hmm. with that, she has emotions and things of that nature for he who remains and tries to impose that onto Victor Timely himself because he's just another alternate version of him. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's so weird. It's so yeah. cringy. Yeah. There's that <laughs> creepy moment. Yeah. When she says, I could be your girl and I love you. And he finally gets the Tim pad and gets her turned off. I thought it was interesting. And also that Tim pad ends up, Renslayer ends up having that Tim pad again, which is, this is always, this confused me when I saw it. So Sylvie sends them to the end of time, but Renslayer's got a Tim pad. So really she can do whatever she wants. She doesn't yeah. have, like, it was just weird that, that Sylvie like neglected to take away the Tim pad you know, or didn't realize she had her own Tim pad. I don't know. It just, it just was weird that, that Sylvie made such a big point of, Oh, I'm sending you to the end of time instead of killing you, you Hmm. know? And then, but then, so that's when she whips out that Tim pad and she releases Miss Minutes. And I'm like, when did she get that from? Because Victor had it. And I guess she took (laughs) it from him when she was in the, in that workshop before they, it was just, it it, it just was one of those continuity moments that kind of confused me a little bit. Uh, And of course, in the next episode, we're going to see them, come back from the end of time mm. and and go uh into the where the general is and stuff so general docs is so yeah and then we do get answers which uh leads us to because miss minutes kind of uh says something to renslayer about oh well you don't know and yeah then, and then we were left on that cliffhanger and renslayer with the weapon and things of that nature towards the end of that episode and which leads us to episode four and what were your thoughts on this you know it was a i liked episode four i didn't like it probably as much as i liked episode three yeah um but you know we do get that it was good it was it was i these last 3 episodes just seemed like i can't put my finger on why like we'll get to we'll get to episode 5 and i've got thoughts about episode 5 but, okay ugh. um but you know episode 4 was okay it was just it was just good it wasn't like it, it wasn't it, amazing uh, i would i would agree with that it wasn't amazing but it had its moments here and there and that's about it for oh me. yeah yeah, but we did get a little bit, a few more answers. We do get to see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of pruning mm-hmm. and killing at this time too, which we're not really happy about. And yeah, actually, it gets we, it gets we dark. Discussed yeah. this before, mm-hmm. but um, we find out that he who remains had wiped out Renslayer's mind from Miss Minutes because we get like a uh, like kind of like a flashback to yeah. that moment. And he orders Protocol 42 to Miss Minutes, which not only wipes her mind, but everybody else's mind in the TVA. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of Order 66, like in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so it's his way of controlling everybody at this point in within the TVA because he is in charge of the TVA. Yeah. And 
you know, and then we we get uh, Victor Timely brought into the TVA, and he's working with them along with them. He has his moments of obsession or uh, loving of Ob. Yeah, that uh, fanboy moment from both that, of them. Both of them to, together, yeah. and then on top of that, he's seeing newer technology, which you know, it, well, he loves to look at, like with uh, hot chocolate. You know, Mobius shows him the hot chocolate, and then there's a machine. There's a machine that does this. Yeah, uh, because he's from 1893. He doesn't know, mm-hmm. and uh, he gets obsessed with that, and then. Uh, it kind of moves into the conversation with uh, who actually came first, uh, the chicken or the egg, because the TVA handbook that was given to Timely was written by Mobius and uh, not Mobius, or, uh, OB. OB. Right. And then OB kind of because I guess Timely is referenced within it and he knows who Timely is. And it's like, will you sign mine? Will you sign mine? And yeah. it was that whole fanboying thing. Yeah, but it, it was, was really a way cool. for them to work with one another. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was interesting for the fact that he was brought in to uh, work with uh, dealing with the loom. And then he has uh, a uh, device that is pretty much a, a model that was to uh, to fix certain things for like yeah. the throughport for the loom to fix the branches and it's in a small scale but they're able to implement it within the actual uh after adapter or throughport to diminish the amount of branches that are going on within the rings right and, well no they want to make the wings they're going to make the wings wider yeah. so they can the rings can accommodate more time more time but we're, we'll get to, and we'll get to that when we get to episode six we'll talk some more about that yeah but uh yeah, you know, and and we had that moment in this episode where you called it. It was Loki who pruned himself uh, there from episode one. We were wondering that. And I remember you saying that all the way back in episode one. Well, maybe Loki, maybe like a future Loki did it to himself. I was like, yep. And so we see we get that in this episode. We get Sylvie and Loki on the phone where they're trying to figure out what to do about Miss Minutes. And Obi says, well, I can reboot her, but if I do that, all the safety protocols go down, like using magic in the TVA. And they're like, shut it off, turn it down, turn it off. Because <laughs> uh, then she's able to enchant Brad and Brad goes in and as an enchanted Brad goes in and then prunes Rinslayer. Mm. Uh, which I thought was was again another one of those moments where we get to see uh, Loki and Sylvie using using magic there, which is pretty cool. But uh, sadly enough, uh, Brad is also incorporated with Renslayer, and they wind mm-hmm. up killing a lot of the the resistance, as it were. Yeah, General Dox and her Minutemen, General Dox and her Minutemen. All that line, that chill, you know, that moment we talked about this in that moment when. Miss Minutes just has this glee, like look at glee on her face as we see as, as, the, <laughs> as the yeah, as the the box is getting smaller, and you can see Rinslayer's like shutting her eyes and grimacing, and uh, Brad is doing the same thing. He's like shutting his eyes and he can't don't, doesn't want to watch it. Um, but you know that line from Docs where she says, "How does it feel knowing that all of us would rather die than follow you out that door?" was just chilling to to Rinslayer and Rinslayer then. So yeah, it was it was a, a dark dark moment in the in the show for us, I think. Well, also this whole scene with them and how they wanted they wanted to basically preserve certain things so they could have their own life. I think that's kind of foreshadowing what we do see in the finale and episode five as well, because we get to see people in our own lives. You know, like we said, mm-hmm. this is spoilers. But by episode five, we do see. Yeah, we've already said spoilers. We don't need to keep telling them we're spoilers. This is, this is, <laughs> we just we told them if they haven't watched the show yet, then why are they listening to us? That but yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that, that are that from four are going to tie into these later episodes. But uh, you know, it was it was really cool to see that sign on the and you we talked about this before also that sign on the model of the loom that says not to scale and <laughs> ob's like like i was only able to do one coat of paint and this isn't yeah. to scale i didn't make all the figures of all of us and they're all the just back like to the future <laughs> moment yeah the back <laughs> to the doc brown moment and uh, loki's just like it's fine it's 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 really it's really fine you know uh was was just just a really funny moment a good homage to back to the future like you said and, the, the, and there was an homage to Jurassic Park as well, to shutting it down and things of that yeah. nature, too. Rebooting the system. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, I love when we get this conversation between Sylvie and Loki. And this is, I reference this a little bit in three because mm-hmm. we hear those those timelines are, are being growing back again. 
Um, but you know, Sylvie still, I guess she doesn't know that because she still cares about the fact that all those timelines got pruned and she's so mad. Well, why do you want to, why do we want to build up the TVA when they let all those timelines get killed? <laughs> and it really was interesting. Sylvie caring about these, these timelines that you wouldn't normally think, think that, that would be something. And then, you know, like ending up in the pie shop, <laughs> I made a wrong turn. I ended up with where the pies are. It was really cool. All that, all this, like four, now I'm starting to, yeah, four was a little bit better than what I said. It was just all right. It was good. Um, it, it was a little bit dark and gloomy at the at points, I think. And that's yeah. what we're, and then we do at the very end, we're we're left with that whole wow. Victor Timely just went all spaghetti on us at the mm-hmm. very end, so we kind of lost uh, Victor. But how are they going to fix this? What's the next step of what's going on? And later on, like between episodes five, even six, we get the whole time slipping comes back with Loki. Yeah. This is why I think this is one of the reasons why I didn't like five. Cause I was just like, what, why are we, why are we back to this? Is it because the loom exploded? We're back to him time slipping again. And it just was a, it just was a very. And it became like an important factor of like the overall season. It's just that it, it, the way like, like you and me, we got a little bit confused as to why is this an issue? And at the toward, at the very end, we kind of get an idea because he who remains actually does explain it at uh, in season uh, and episode six. Yeah, but here's here's my problem. Okay, here's here's part of my problem with episode five. It felt like a waste because he gets mm-hmm. everybody together. And yes. just for them all to disappear. Okay, he gets Casey, who's now known as Frank from uh 1962 San Francisco B15 Dr yep. Willis is in 2012 New York uh Mobius slash Dawn is in 2022 Cleveland uh and OB I didn't catch what his name was same in, here I, but he's a, I, a science fiction writer that's why it's called science science fiction yeah whatever. and he's yeah. in Pasadena in 1994 and I'm, okay so we gather them all together um and I was just like Obi built a time a temp pad based from from what he saw in the handbook, you know, and he says it took him uh, 19 months and one month he lost his wife and lost his job and had yeah. to move out. And I was just like, this is it just was a and then, of course, the end of the episode, they all just turn into spaghetti. And I'm like going. So what was the point of the whole the whole point of this episode was just to to get us to the point where Obi says, well, you have to start controlling your time slipping. OK, it was cool to see. Yeah, the backstories of these characters. It was cool to see Mobius and his jet ski selling <laughs> stuff, but but still, it was just, I, it just like that. Whole I, thing I think about- they just wanted to give us those little snippets of Mobius and fig- factor in what that whole jet ski thing was. Literally, him carrying that in his brain from an another alternate version of himself that. That's why it carried into the main TVA plot point yeah. where he's got those and magazines. We knew that. We and knew then, that though. So, yeah. And then Hunter B15 as a doctor, Casey as one of the prisoners that had originally escaped from Alcatraz that never they never figured out or found out. Uh and then uh obviously OB and then realizing okay, OB is not exactly what we like I had speculated, like he, I always thought either he's a different version of Kang or he's a different version of Loki. But in this case, oh, he's just somebody that is trapped in the TVA as well and mind wiped. And yeah. then you got Sylvie there as well, where she, in this particular one, Loki tries to convince her, you know, the the, the few things that I take away that I liked within it was uh, seeing Mobius initially where he's sitting on the jet ski in the shop, but you know, you don't know it's the shop, but you have, John Farnham's song from the movie Rad in it that uh, I just love that song. And, uh, you know, the, just the introduction of their different characters that I liked. But uh, the recruiting, uh, we do get a f- uh, like a callback to uh, with Brad with the Zaniac game in the bar when Sylvie yeah, and Loki okay. are talking. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. There are little things. I can't say I hated the episode. I like little aspects about it, but I think this was one where it's like it fell short for the penultimate episode 
Yeah, it or, missed the mark. It missed the mark on so many things for me. Like, and there's a couple, and there's stupid little things that they put in there that they never explain. Like, yeah. for instance, why does Sylvie remember him? Nobody else remembers him, but Sylvie does. Okay, maybe it's because she's a Loki and she's like, whatever. But yeah. they don't give us any explanation that, okay, she puts this bag of food and her drink on the, the truck and it disappears. There's no explanation <laughs> of that. I don't know if that's a continuity error or if there actually was something going on there like i think the, somebody got fired from the show because they I, didn't do continuity properly well, <laughs> you, but you hear a sound and that sound is it just uh it just but it's a little thing that just bugs me that why would you put that in there and then like the whole thing about the tim pad just that that mo that ob makes disappearing and they yeah. make a big deal about well casey did you take it and i'm like obviously casey didn't take it because if he had took it he wouldn't be there anymore Correct. So it's well, a that, that was too to obvious, ask. and it was a but stupid still, argument too. It's yeah, it's a stupid question to ask because he's standing right there. Why would he be standing there if he took the tim pad? Also, who took the tim pad? I'm like, I think it was Loki, a different version of Loki, but they didn't show it. So I, I think that Loki. That I don't we, even think that. I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna say it was just crap writing. I'm sorry, <laughs> just crap writing. Because there's why have this big argument about who took the tim pad and then no explanation of it. Yeah. Nothing, nothing to follow up. And we have no reason to follow up on it either because Loki figures out that, okay, it's, it's his concentration. It's his wanting to not be alone, wanting to be with Sophie. That's what is his, his, whatever. It's not why it's who, you know, Ooh, now I can control my time slipping. Great. So that's, we just made a whole episode to get us to that point of him controlling his time slipping. And it's just like, it's uh it just you know sylvie is in the the record shop and somehow she doesn't disappear she's able to use her tim pad and go back to the ob's lab and tell them no you do have to do something because the the timelines mm. are are erupting and then she and then they all just uh it just it just crap writing to me this episode just doesn't that episode five just doesn't make any sense to me and i'm gonna stand out and say it doesn't make sense there's too many things that uh, I mean, I sure, understand. <laughs> sure, you can say it's cool that we got to see some of it, and it's it was okay, like, we, cool for little things. But like <laughs> I said, they did fall short for a penultimate episode. Uh, the only cool takeaways, like I said, were what I talked about. It's interesting that you know Obi was a science fiction writer. Uh, we do get the Velvet on the Grounds. Oh, sweet, nothing in there, and apparently that was based on the directors, the, the duos that do the directing vision and vibe they wanted to create when everything starts to spaghetti on, on Sylvie at that time, uh, then, you know, everyone spaghetti's out on Loki and it, it and stops it after Sylvie goes away. Uh, yeah. They repeat the same moment. He And this is where I state, and it goes right into, I think Loki technically is the key to everything that's going on literally within the MCU because it wasn't until he literally took uh, whatever it was from the first Avengers movie. I, I forget what it is, uh, but he takes that and that's when he get trapped in the TVA. I think that's when everything went to, to craziness with all these alternate universes and everything else. I don't think it was Wanda. Wanda was only a little small, small speck of what was going on, but I think Loki is the key. And that's when we get really into within episode six, where we get the nitty gritty, which we should really talk about because that yeah, is the prime. I, I will, I will give you, I will give you some props. You know, the music better than I did. I, and so, so I can see your appreciation of this episode because you recognize it. I didn't, I don't, I don't recognize. Oh, okay. I mean, I know those, who those bands are. I, I don't know those songs. I would not. And the, the subtitles didn't, give us the titles uh, like they oh, usually really? do. Oh, the sub okay. Yeah. The subtitles that I had anyway, didn't give us, it just said rock music playing. And okay. I was like, it's really not, does it sound like rock music? It sounds like something different. And I went to IMDb and there was no list of the songs and no music listening. So I had no way to appreciate what, what they had done there. Yeah. The music was cool. I was like, okay. Uh, so I, I, I get your appreciation of the episode. I just think yeah. it was just, I, I just still stand by that. There's too many for me. There's too many things that I look at and go, why, why put why this in there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, why put it in there if you're not going to explain it? Yeah. Like just if you're, if don't put it in there, if you're not going to explain it, if you're not going to just, 
uh, that just it just bugs me and it's obviously it's little things but still okay episode six glorious uh glorious what is it glorious purpose. uh purpose yeah which, which literally said, was uh uh i think a season one title at one point it might have been because he says it in the previously on he says something about glorious purpose and then in the episode he also says glorious purpose yeah. uh as well a couple of times or at least once uh, in the episode. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I liked, I liked the use of the previously on because even though I rewatched season one, I do not remember he who remains saying reincarnation, baby. Yeah. And same they, here. They, they really hit that hard in this episode, him saying reincarnation, baby. And I'm like, I don't remember him saying that. And so I'm going to go back and rewatch that, that, ep- that last episode again and yeah. see if maybe they inserted something in there that was a cut scene just so they could stress it but uh and that it doesn't make any sense to me but hey it's this the the version of, of he who remains that loki interacts with outside of time like when they freeze sylvie it's a very different character that we saw in season one in comparison yeah. to this one it's more it's uh in season one at the end when we do get to meet he who remains uh, I agree with you. He he is a little bit more meeker, more wanting to fix and take care of things within time, whereas this one is a little bit more pompous and a little bit more sinister, I should say, almost a Kang, uh, as it yeah. were, because he is technically a version of Kang. Yeah, but- it just it was it, it was Jonathan Majors played it. It's like he played the character in this season differently than he played the character in season one and i yeah, don't he did. I, it's 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 it, it's it's okay i don't mind it because i get it but at the same time i'm kind of like eh, it's a little uh um but I, I i let's so getting back to the groundhog day of it i thought was really really cool the okay use of, all right i was waiting for you to say that a lot of the, people use groundhog day i use a uh, happy death day was another one that uh okay, yeah happy uh, death my, day my 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 nephew's in uh in law actually had wrote and directed uh the two but i i had actually mentioned it to him and i said to him i said there's all this stuff but everybody's stealing from everybody but it's the same thing uh literally loki is there trying to redo the same thing over and over again to get up to it which is so funny and interesting it's very similar to like what Loki was doing when he had everybody else at the TVA or or them sitting there in episode the last episode, episode five, where they're trying to figure out and how to make things work. But in this case, it's working to get something resolved. But in this case, instead of Walter Timely being the one, ultimately Victor. it was Loki that had yeah. to fix everything. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought it was uh there's this one part though in a montage of humorous scenes set to the tune of Walter Murphy's a fifth of Beethoven, which is like a disco ish kind yeah. of thing that came out years ago. Uh, the, ele- the events of Loki season two, episode four were played out in several different ways from many different perspectives, according to yeah. what I saw online, uh, yeah, as Loki attempted it. to undo the destruction of the TVA. So I yeah. liked it very much because it's like him over and over and over again. But at least it's not in your face. But they did it r- rapidly. Yeah, and- I liked. I, I liked that. There's there's a lot of exposition in there. The exposition works though. Like when he says, "Don't set the don't set it down because it'll roll off the platform." And when Victor starts to set it down, look, he's like, "Uh, don't know. This is don't you know, the last down. time. The last time they do it when when they actually were able to launch it." And mm-hmm. Loki's like, "It's going to work this time," and they're all happy that it's going to work. And then they suddenly realize. You can't scale. Uh, how did I got to hear my notes? Timely says you can't scale for infinite. Yes. So you can't. You're. It's going to be infinite timelines. You can't scale for that. So and then you know the reveal that the loom really was never supposed to contain the timelines. It was supposed to destroy these timelines and just keep the sacred timeline. Correct. Yeah. So we find out. You know, we find out that that was the actual purpose of the loom was not to contain all these timelines. It was supposed to. They were supposed to be getting rid of them mm-hmm. as they went along and just keeping the sacred timeline. But of course, that's not what ended up happening. And I love, um, you know, the the then when he can't when he figures out that okay the multiplier I can't fix the multiplier so mm-hmm. now I'm going to have to go back to another point. 
and figure out, well, is there something here I can do? This is why I call it Groundhog Day because he does different things. And it's like the the one when he, he learns long- new, he learns learns literally learns right. quantum mechanics because he asks so be how long he goes. Well, I'm also a god, and yeah. I I don't know. But it, it could take centuries, and then we see that graphic on the screen centuries. So yeah. centuries did go by because, like in Groundhog Day, that's one of the things that that people have speculated. And I've I've seen a couple of articles online years ago about it, speculating how many days did he actually live and because they're they're looking at like how long does it take to learn french how long does it take to to learn piano Correct. um and so how many years did he spend living the same day over and, and I, over I, again yeah i can't remember what somebody figured out how like a couple of different people figured out different timelines of if he wow. if he stacked up things you know he might have been able to do it in like two years uh two years of the same day would have been just weird but yeah and it would make you go mad too if you think you would think you would think but not (laughs) but so that's why when when it said centuries later i was like oh this is kind of like ground during the and that we don't know how long he spent living that one moment you know Mm -hmm. and so then he switches to okay do i stop sylvie from killing he who remains maybe that'll do it and Mm -hmm. she keeps repeating that line uh you know if you want to stop if you want me to stop you'll have to kill me and how many times she does that you know, it's just um, it really, just really, a really, really good use of that theme. This, the like I said, the repeating, the repeating time theme is been done, and like he has that conversation with he who remains, where he who remains says, "Well, how many times have you have you had this? Have we had this conversation?" So you know, go go ahead, and we'll have this conversation a few thousand more times, and, and then, then when you're when you're ready, we'll talk. We'll and talk. And he we'll pauses talk. time. Loki winds up doing it because he's yeah. able to do what he who remains does, and then, and then he goes. Ding, you did it mm-hmm. and it's as if he who remains knew already that that was going to happen it's just not the right time mm-hmm. and the fact is is that loki learned how to control his time slipping knew how to control time to a certain point meaning this character of loki is very much more powerful than he ever was not only does he have magical powers but he's able to do this stuff and we do get that. And the fact is, he he thought he would be able to go to that moment. And if he stopped Sylvie from killing he who remains, originally that thought would it would end everything and where they're at. But it didn't happen. But that's when he got gets all the information from he who remains at that mm-hmm. point. And then he realizes he has to go back to that one focal point in time and do. And he did what magically within the branches to stop everything or create even more of an issue because he is a god and he has that power of time now Mm -hmm. and yeah i think i think what he did what we're supposed to and this is where there's a little bit uh in my notes here about this because i think basically what he did was he became the loom uh, in a in a sense, but he made it into a tree so that it grows, Correct. so it has room to have infinite uh, timelines. And I noticed when the in the after time, there's a poster on the wall when B15 comes out, uh, and the poster at the end says it's got a picture of the tree and a couple people like around the tree, like tending to the tree that he created with all those different timelines. Mm-hmm. Um, and it says, "Let's grow together." And then at the bottom, something about uh, nurture something for a stable future. Uh, and it's, it was kind of blurred out. So I couldn't read it completely when I paused hmm. it this time, but yeah, so they changed their kind of method of what they're doing and realizing that, okay, we're not going to be, we're, we're, these new timelines are being created, but now they're branches of this tree that Loki has done. And you remember Loki said he was going to claim his throne and that's what he did. He claimed his throne on in time. Uh, Correct. And so I, I think that last that last image where we see him sitting there and the tree is all around him is he has become, you know, the, the god of time, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where we're headed for within the MCU. I would not be surprised if this is the last season that we ever get of Loki. And then his character goes into the MCU and it becomes a crucial portion of what leads us to, which is the the ultimate a uh, movie which is secret wars where where time becomes uh, uh alternate variations of people all these variants from different timelines become 
an issue. I wouldn't be surprised that he's there working against Kang the Conqueror and having the same ability. So uh, those comics are from, I would say, about 13 years ago that they came out. And they were great for its time, but these are adaptations, so they might kind of twist certain characters. Mm -hmm. So those of you that are comic fans like me, you can't get the truest version of what you want from the MCU that you, you got from your comics. If you want that, they should just do an animation uh, and have it done verbatim from the comic to animation to, you know, basically to ha make those people happy who love the comics. The, the MCU is doing its own adaptation for those that don't follow the comics. And mm -hmm. I understand that completely. And I look at it from both perspectives now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm looking forward to see what he does. And I don't think that we're going to get another season of Loki. I think this is probably it. And then uh, we'll probably just see him. I don't MCU. know. We'll see. I, you know, there's this is where we can kind of talk about the things that we thought we were going to see that mm. we didn't see. You know, things like like we thought we were going to see the other Loki variants and we didn't. But then we get that little at the end with Renslayer waking up at the end of time and somebody startles her. Mm. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we get a, a third season and they just use one of the Loki variants. Um, be because I mean, we're still out there. Sylvie's still out there. Mobius went home, but that doesn't mean he's going to stay home. You know, because B15, <laughs> P15 told him if you ever, you know, if you ever want to come back, there's always a seat at the table here. You know, then they're talking about, you know, has um has any of the variants figured out who that were here yet? And he's like, no, none of them have figured out. One of them did something on a parallel dimension to 616, which I can't remember what uh 616 is. That's 616 is supposedly the main timeline that we all timeline. know the main okay. earth uh okay. of what we know which is like spider-man the avengers right. all of them are on so that that might be an interesting that might be what he, if he's talking about that that might be one of the upcoming like you said the secret wars movie or something i don't know i yeah. just I, i'm just interested that we might we could get a season three we don't have to um they don't really have to show us it just was it was kind of interesting that they would show what they they would have Sylvie's still out there and like Mobius asked where are you going to go and she's like mm, I don't know and she just leaves and so we're like <laughs> okay where's she going um Loki's going home I guess he's gonna I, or he's just standing there because he says I'm gonna stand here for a little bit because he's got to figure out what time now if <laughs> what timeline is he on that he's mm. created um when he takes it when he because you know <laughs> It's just going to be interesting to see. I, I I could see a third season coming, um, or or not. But it would be you know they give us that that scene of showing us the young Victor Timely, it when he's in his in his shop there. And originally in episode four, three episode three, that's where he gets the book. Hmm. But we notice that this time he doesn't get the book. So he hmm. just kind of looks back at the window and it's and nothing happens. So Nothing's we there, can yeah. we can see that things have changed. In that, so in that timeline, at least, so I'm going to be like, I think they could do a, a third season. It would be interesting to see where you go from here. You know, are they going to, can they interact with this Loki who's time? Can he step out of the tree? And like you said, is he going to be part of the, the stuff against he who remains variants? Kang, is he going to fight them? I don't know. It's mm, a good it's, question. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of possibilities here that I think they could do a third season, but if they don't, they don't. I, I also love the callback because as w Loki is walking on that that platform going towards the end and then creating that tree and the, with the branches and everything and mm -hmm. showing his power, we get the horns. The horns come back out slowly again. coming yeah. back, the classic look of Loki that we know. And I really did enjoy that. It was like, oh, it's just this long time coming. We haven't seen this in... Literally yeah. two seasons, if you think. Yeah, about that CGI it. was great. Of his suit kind of falling away, and him coming back into his his uh, uniform or or his Asgardian clothing yep. it was great. And, yeah, and the tree itself being green with his mm -hmm. power and his magic. So yeah, it, yeah it, it's showing him as being more of a uh, stronger. I, I'm not going to say villain. I always still think of Loki as an anti-hero. 
yeah. in a sense that he's there to do good, but what helps him out and anybody else, but he will do bad against those, like which just like, you know, he who remains or miss minutes. Uh, I'm still curious if we'll get to see them again. Uh, right. in, the, in the event of, of all this, I wouldn't put it past it. I, I think you're probably correct in saying that people probably get a season three. But then again, this this show is one of the highest rated on Disney Plus when it comes to the Marvel. Uh, a lot of people didn't like that, uh, like a lot of others, like they didn't like Hawkeye. They didn't like uh, mm-hmm. Falcon and Winter Soldier, things of that nature. Uh, WandaVision was heralded as being very good. Uh, was still waiting for uh, Agatha and what what's going on with that, if they're even mm-hmm. going to come back with that or just make it a mini movie. Yeah. Uh, and then we know that Echo was brought back, even though they uh, at one point Disney was looking to cancel that. And, but they've already filmed a lot. So I guess they're moving forward and and giving us that. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like, but I'm not going to look forward to like podcasting every episode on it. I would yeah. just love to do that as a whole to just embrace it completely, just like a movie. Yeah. Because uh, I am looking forward to seeing Charlie Cox back as Daredevil. But yep. yeah, for um for it Loki, was a good it was a good finale. Yeah. Um if it like I said, if they if they make a season three, great. If they don't, I could see them ending it here, you know, because these characters you're really probably not going to bring Sylvie into the MCU proper. I don't see her having really any place. I don't see him. I don't really see her surviving, you know, as a variant of Loki, I I could see her getting killed. So if they wind up just destroying her in season three or even, even, I mean, I just don't see, I just see her not. Yeah. I just see her not coming back. I just, I mean, I love, I would love to see her come back. Yeah. I just don't see what context they would bring her back. If, outside of a season three Correct. i can't see i can't yeah, see where... she doesn't fit the format of what yeah yeah uh, that would work for the mcu i think yeah but yeah um, I, that's uh, all i got that's all i got too that i think that that covers everything that we needed to cover yeah. on these uh four episodes but uh overall i did like uh the season six finale it was interesting to get that feel and i uh, like like you know steve was saying I did enjoy the whole Groundhog Day, Happy Death Day 2 kind of uh, feel with him having to go back and do all that stuff again. Uh, I just loved the the little nuances. Uh, I was kind of disappointed we didn't get more out of OB of what he really was, but apparently he's just a science fiction writer. But yeah, he overall, was just a TDA yeah. worker. So Yeah, I, I, I like the, uh, the season. The season as a whole was pretty good. It wasn't as great as season one was because obviously the first season is the first season that you bank everything on yeah and you fall in love with the whole thing and the idea of it but yeah i would i would say the same thing season i like season i definitely like season one better i'm not you know putting uh, episode five aside yeah i i the season as a whole i liked it was it was good it was it was i mean i would not rank it you know, I don't know how I would rank the the shows right now. Um, that's that's tough for me because I have to go back and rewatch some of them. But I would definitely like for me if we were ranking all of these shows. You know, uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, One Division, um, <laughs> Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Moon Knight, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Hawkeye, yeah, and then this one, Loki. Um, I would definitely put for me Moon Knight as number one. I really enjoyed that. What one and two would be WandaVision, Moon Knight. They could probably switch back <laughs> and forth for me. Um, number three, probably Hawkeye, uh, because I liked I liked that that whole that whole thing. And then four, Captain America and the, the Winter Soldier, and then Loki would come in in fifth. But you know, Loki's the one that got two seasons. So yeah, I don't know. I it was it, like I said, it was okay. And and if we get a season three, great. If we don't so yeah exactly same here i wouldn't i would probably put wandavision one and then uh, i would put loki three but hawkeye two and falcon and the winter soldier uh 
was it Falcon and Winter Soldier? Falcon and Winter Soldier, yeah. Then it, it, then it became Captain America at, at the end, the last episode when he became yeah, Captain America. Yeah, because they're so supposed right. to do the new Captain America movie too. Right. And right. then obviously Moon Knight. Moon Knight floats in between for me, like two and three, because it's kind of mm-hmm. hard to wedge in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah really exactly. Enjoy it's it. hard. It's hard to put them because I, I enjoyed all five. All five shows. I'll I'll say that all five shows were enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and I haven't got the only one I've gone back and rewatched is WandaVision. So I guess I should rate that as number one since I, that's the only one I've actually gone back and rewatched. <laughs> but I, I plan on going back to rewatch Moon Knight at some point. Yeah. Um, and it's and we'll pretty see. cool that we get all that stuff too. That's that's yeah. the awesome thing about Disney Plus. They're not removing a lot of the the Marvel content. Unfortunately, we we lost a, a couple of shows on there like Willow and things of that mm. nature because uh, uh, based on ratings and people's approval and everything, so it, it's hard to come by. Yeah. But a lot of these uh, Disney Plus shows are coming out on Blu-ray or Steelbook Blu-ray. So you can find a lot mm. of uh, like WandaVision and Loki and stuff like that. They're being re-released. So for the holidays, oh. if you're looking for a gift for one of your loved ones, you could go out and go buy them. That's not me just plugging away for anything that I'm doing, but <laughs> I'm just saying it's pretty cool. So uh, I'm not saying that they're going away anytime soon. But uh, for now, we have them on Disney Plus. It's like kind of like a Netflix only content. So with that end that they have on Netflix, where it's like a, a Netflix specific, they're not going to remove that content. It's always going to be there. So right. for Disney Plus, it's always going to be there, depending on what it is. But uh, I, yeah, you know, I think that we we covered Loki season two properly with the with this last episode on it. Uh, to keep you listeners notified, we are going to do a review of the Marvels with, like I already stated in the very beginning, it came out literally at the, the same night that uh, Loki season two, episode six, the finale came out. So uh, this is the weekend this Friday that we're covering, but I'm looking forward to seeing it on Sunday and get some notes together in my head because uh really hard when you have to go to the movies and you can't watch it over and over again <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna try to see it monday is is gonna be my goal if, so uh, yeah next week right. we'll cover that uh, i figure that'll be the next episode that we do uh to keep you guys uh notified too i kind of fell back on a lot of things so uh st- rob and i will be doing episodes four uh three four five and six or was it five no no five, six, seven, and eight of Gen V. <laughs> so uh, we're ca- playing catch up because uh, I didn't put out those episodes. Uh, Rob was out for a while, so I'm going to be uh, doing that. Uh, and then uh, that that's about it uh, as far as what we're doing right here on Panels to Pixels. So uh, next up, uh, will podcast recommendations or where people could listen to you, Steve? Um. You know, really, right now, the podcasting shows, the, the, I'll push Strange Indeed. They're covering uh, the fall of the House of Usher, and I'm sending them voicemails in for each of those those episodes. Uh, they also do a bonus episode of uh, uh, Great British Bake Off baking show or whatever it's called. And I missed this week's. Hopefully, I, <laughs> I might have missed. I might have missed it. Usually, they record pretty early, so I may have missed my window for this week because i was busy all morning dealing with a crisis at work uh Uh, and that's that's why when you messaged me i was like yeah it's already been a day like half my day was gone i was dealing with a huge not a huge crisis but a crisis at where i work and i had to uh get that straightened out so once i got it straightened out it was all good that's cool uh yeah i know how busy life could get (laughs) and that's 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 true literally what has been happening uh with, with myself as well that's why a lot of the stuff a lot of the content so a lot of people where you could hear me elsewhere on adrenaline cinema podcast obviously on the pirate core entertainment network you could hear me there uh yeah i released two episodes this past week which was uh late coming for the wolfman which was supposed to be out on halloween so uh, my feeling is whether it came out on uh, people still celebrate into November. Yeah, I'm not one of those people that rush into Christmas, but I still love the idea of having Samhain or Halloween or whatever it is, all that spooky stuff. I like bringing it in. But then again, I like to ring that stuff throughout the year because I love Halloween and I just love horror movies and old classic horror movies, stuff like that. But you could hear uh, also Total Recall 
as well that came out with uh, Jason and myself on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Uh, next up, I'm not certain exactly to what I'm doing yet on there, but we'll have one towards the end of the, end of the month. Uh, it's either Friday the 13th, the final chapter, or it could possibly be uh, another movie out of the blue that I might do with somebody else. Uh, I haven't figured that one out yet, but until that time, just keep a lookout on Facebook. And all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash adrenaline cinema podcast. Uh, you could not only just hear me here on Pounds to Pixels podcast, but there. And you could also hear me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. And upcoming would be our coverage of Prometheus and how we could fix that particular movie from 2012. Uh, honestly, I like the movie, so I don't know why Rob put me on it. <laughs> but uh, I will think of ways to change it. There was a few things in on my rewatch that I watched recently that I could change. So check that out. Uh, that's Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. And then you can hear me on Wilhelm when we cover Monarch, The Legacy of Beasts, which is uh, Legendary's uh, and Apple TV Plus's uh, series about Godzilla and all the legendary monsters which are based on toho product so you can hear me ben beck which it's a uh combined com uh podcast between wilhelm and podcastica so you could hear me there uh look forward to possibly sandman because apparently sandman's coming back within the next year even though they filmed so uh look out for that uh Unfortunately, I didn't put anything out there for this particular episode for you to send feedback. But to send feedback, all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Uh, we could be found on YouTube. And all you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast. Keep that in mind, podcast. Uh, there's another panels to pixels. So don't confuse us with Josh's particular YouTube channel. Uh, while you're there, you could listen to us, you could see us or whatever, whenever we do video or interviews and whatnot, uh, subscribe, give us a thumbs up on the episodes if you like them. They're also put in there as podcasts. So a lot of people like to use that to listen to their podcast. Uh, and obviously talking about podcast players of choice, we can be found on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player of choice. Preferably, if you could give us a kind of rating or review on Apple Podcasts, it would be greatly appreciated. Five stars is always appreciated and welcomed. Uh, but just give us a, a rating or review. Uh, write something out. It'd be amazing because they usually get uh, notified with that. Uh, if you want to email us, you could just email us the normal way, which would be panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Literally, it's panels, two is spelled out to pixels, and the number one at gmail.com. Write out your thoughts. We'll read them. Doesn't necessarily have to be what we're doing currently. It could be an older episode that we covered or show. And then we'll uh, read those comments on the uh, when we record. And then, or if you want to just record yourself and just add it as an attachment, we all have these cool nifty devices so that you could easily do it on your phone, your, uh, you know, iPad or computer because now everybody uses zoom and everything else record yourself and then just send it to us and we'll play it and we'll comment on your uh your thoughts uh we can be found on instagram as well at panels to pixels podcast so follow us there like uh actually notify people when the episode is up or leave the image of where you could you know put your comments below as well just like in facebook it happens at the same time because i link the accounts so uh that that's about it uh i had a good time with this one i'm sad to see loki go for now but uh this was fun yeah. uh, i i just want to thank everybody for listening i'm mark i'm steve different panel different pixel same podcast this was panels to pixels podcast and we'll see you on the next panel good day sir good night <laughs>